Hello and welcome uh, to yet another episode in this uh, very special series that we are doing that is focusing on the very fast growing and very critical relationship between two of the largest democracies uh, on the Indo-Pacific, that is India and Australia. Uh, we are interviewing a series of uh, key policymakers, experts, um, as well as young accomplished entrepreneurs. Today we have with us uh, one of our youngest interviewees, Ayushi Kilian, is uh, a very young and accomplished uh, entrepreneur who is dedicated to advocating for youth and health. At the age of 18, Ayushi was elected as the youngest Australian to sit on a government board, the Victorian Curriculum and Assessment Authority board, where she serves as the only youth and multi-ethnic representative. Uh, Ayushi is also the founder of Body Buddies, a social enterprise that creates and sells soft toys and stickers in the shapes of organs to promote health awareness amongst young people. Through Body Buddies, Ayushi aims to empower the next generation to take an active role in their health and well being by providing fun and engaging educational resources. Ayushi is also an ardent youth and health advocate uh, and is uh, passionate about making a positive impact on society. Her leadership and dedication has been recognized through numerous awards, including 40 under 40 most influential Australian Asians 2020 and seven Young Achievers uh, Awards for Body Buddies 2022. She was also the finalist for the 2023 India Australia Business and Community Alliance uh, as the Young Professional of the Year. Ayushi is a true inspiration for young people who aspire to make a difference in the world and we are very happy to be here with her today. Welcome Ayushi. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here as well. Yes, you know, and that was really a mouthful of uh, uh, <laughs> awards and uh, uh, the kind of uh, work that you've done is incredible. Um, but, um, you know, let me begin by asking you, what really motivated you to start Body Buddies? Yeah, this really started in the heart of COVID. Uh, I am a medical student myself, so I'm, I've always been very passionate about health and health education. And during COVID-19, I think we realized that there was a lack of health awareness in the community, a lack of health preparedness, especially when it came to the pandemic. There was so much rampant COVID globally, especially even in Australia, um, a lack of understanding of how simple health and hygiene masks could be effective in preventing the spread of COVID. And it was these small things that made me realize that, you know, COVID's not the only health crisis we're going to encounter. And we lost so many people in that pandemic. As a medical student, I learned about the, the hidden epidemics, the cardiovascular disease, the diabetes that is affecting our community, the obesity pandemic, you could call it, that we haven't even begun to fully address. And a lot of people don't know exist. So these health problems are going to keep happening in our community. And the only way to overcome that is to raise health awareness and make sure that health education is implemented and integrated into the curriculum from a very young age. We need to generate that health proactive society. And that's when I sat down and had a conversation with my family just over dinner, a bit frustrated. I was thinking, oh, I wish young people could just understand what health was and how important it is. And that's when I came up with the idea of Body Buddies, which is really focused on raising health awareness in a creative and accessible manner. So we try and make health education as fun as possible but also make sure it's accessible to more people using social media. But hopefully we use our funds to actually donate some of our toys and resources to um, underprivileged children overseas. That's wonderful. Uh, and I would have to agree with you that, you know, uh, awareness about health and the kind of, uh, you know, uh, diseases that we are going to encounter and we are sure to mm -hmm. encounter 
future has to be instilled at a very young age, at a very early age. Um, you know, how has, uh, uh, you know, you use soft toys in body buddies yeah. to contribute to promoting health awareness. And it sounds really, really sweet. Uh, how has that helped you in promoting health awareness? Yeah. So I think it's a very unique approach um, and it was a good place to start because soft toys is something that a lot of people buy they buy for their children but also family members who are sick so it was a great way to create health awareness in a very creative way and what I've done is not just made the toys I made sure that each toy came with an educational booklet and I sat down with a whole bunch of health professionals to generate that booklet with simple but accurate medical information about how the body functions and how to take care of it. Um, so if you purchase, for example, the heart toy, it has a booklet on how the heart functions, how to keep it healthy, and a little bit about the basic anatomy. So that comes complementary with each with each toy, and that's what I use to sort of promote health awareness. A, a simple way, and each booklet is uses cartoons. It's very engaging. And, you know, when I um, initially started this enterprise and this project, I was focusing only on young people, um, very, very much children. But it's grown so much more than that. And actually, a lot of adults, a lot of people who are very ill, their family members buy these toys for moral support. They also buy the toys just to learn for themselves and engage in our social media platforms. So it's That's been exactly. an effective way. Yeah effective way to communicate with more people than even just kids what I've realized that's exactly what I was thinking you know when you were describing these toys and saying it comes with a booklet I was like well I'd like to have one of them because you know yeah. it's like easy read and you know these are things that you yeah. don't necessarily pick up and look into you know yeah. you don't google these things so it, when you started and I find this really fascinating because it's a brilliant brilliant idea you know so when you started how did you come up with this idea? How did you realize that this, you know, possibly wouldn't just educate young kids, but it has so much more to it and would have a larger impact? Yeah, I think truly because when I started it, I didn't think about creating a business. I had a mission and vision in mind, which was to raise health awareness. And that's what guided my my progress and, and my process and that's what's guiding it currently. So we want to continuously expand Body Buddies um, beyond just just the toys. But really, because I I have quite an interesting background, I've worked a lot with young people in the youth sector. Um, I've done a lot of volunteering with young people. I've traveled overseas to Nepal and other places to do some health volunteering with young people. Um, I've also, I work in the education sector on the education board. So I'm well aware of the curriculum and how education works and how to teach. And then I also have a huge passion for health and health um, awareness as a medical student. So really a lot of these in interests combined together when I came up with Body Buddies, an interest in youth, an interest in education and an interest in health. So it was really just that spark that, oh, I need to think of a very interesting way to interact with kids. And one other thing was when I traveled to Nepal in 2019, I did a health workshop with young children in um, a rural village there. And what we realized is with the language barrier, we needed a very interesting and creative way to communicate health to them. Yeah. So that's when we came up with creating models of teeth um, to teach them how to brush their teeth um, and creating a big paper model of the body and asking them to label each one. So we really used creative resources to cross language barriers and still teach them about health. So that also helped to me when I thought of Body Buddies because I thought this is a creative way that isn't just stopped by language barriers. It it exceeds bar barriers to allow for health education to be more universal. Absolutely. And you've worked clearly so much with young people. So my next question is, you know, going to be, how do you think, uh, you know, how do you think 
they can learn more about health um, mm. and be more aware. But uh, what do you also think are the biggest obstacles between them and this sort of awareness about their own bodies and health? Yeah. Well, number one is the way it's taught. I think it is, it is at least in Australia, integrated into the curriculum. But in lots of parts of the world, it's not integrated into the curriculum. It's not mandatory to learn about health. And health is a wider topic than it seems. It's not just learning about anatomy. It's learning about diet and healthy eating and, you know, hygiene and sanitation. Um, these aspects are not necessarily always always enforced into the curriculum. But even if it is, like it is in Australia, it's not always well taught. It has to be engaging. Um, especially with the younger generation, what we realize is they really, they almost have, a lot of them have a smaller attention span, largely due to social media. So we really need creative, you can't just give them exams. We need creative ways to make them enjoy health education. And it's something that they actually want to learn. So that's the kind of dynamic that I hope Body Buddies is a bit of an inspiration to teachers and curriculum um, makers to ensure that the way they teach is very creative. And that's definitely um, the main thing. And, and the second thing is harnessing the use of social media. Mm. Young people are much more prevalent on social media and they use it every day. That is what we need to target. We need to make health education accessible on social media. And that's what Body Buddies aims to do. We use Instagram and TikTok to create health education videos simple fun but a little bit educational at the same time we even run a bit of case studies to encourage people to guess what kind of condition people have and how to treat it so it's it's harnessing social media and making sure we connect with young people in a way that betters them so you know uh, this is the work that you're doing and you're you know i'm sure you have a fraternity of people like you you know who uh, push very hard for this sort of uh, intervention. But uh, if I was to ask you, what do you think would be maybe the top ways that young people themselves could become advocates? Mm. I think for young people to become advocates, it is really to get involved in these kinds of programs, um, to first learn about what are the problems in this community and how to cross it so I when I was young I really got involved in volunteering programs working with other young people um, and that and getting that mentorship and support allowed me to develop those skills and understanding of what the problems are in the community so it's really about trying to give opportunities to young people to learn so one of the things Body Buddies is doing this year is providing a volunteer internship for 10 people to join our team and help with our health awareness campaigns. And, and through that, my goal is for them to see and learn about what we're doing so that they then leave and do something themselves to spread that message. So we need more of more young people involved in these kind of programs, getting themselves out there, exploring the community so that they can understand their problems. The next thing is obviously we need support from from the government, from organizations. There is a lot of discrimination still against young people being in executive levels, um, having making those decisions. So we still need a societal shift to, to emphasize the importance of young people and the changes that they can make and, and trust and faith um, in their potential and skills. So it's it's a it's efforts from young people themselves, but also efforts from a societal aspect to change that narrative that we've written so far that young people can't do much. We really need to change that. So basically, what you're saying is that you know governments themselves could provide opportunities for yes, uh, you know, for young people to get far more involved than they are, and that would probably yes. give them credits to. Uh, you know, really take this work seriously. Um, Ayushi, let me ask you, you know, um, you are of Indian descent, you're in Australia, uh, you know both these communities really well. And, mm. uh, you know, how would you say that, uh, 
you know, uh, India and Australia can work together to provide opportunities for youth in the healthcare sector? I think there is a, first of all, there's a booming population here of Indians. It's a vastly growing sector of people, um, mainly in the working space. So it's definitely an area where there's a lot of potential for them to do good in the community. It's a growing community and we need more Indian people encouraged. I think it is really about political connections between India and Australia. I think the Australian Prime Minister was just in India recently for Holi um, and posted about it. So it's small things like that that shows the relationship between India and Australia. And the main thing is encouraging Indian and ethnic and migrant background people to enter into uh, levels of leadership and policy making. That that will really allow for change, diversity, and representation. So, for example, me being on my uh, Victorian curriculum board as the first Indian is a big deal because there are out of 50,000 students every year writing year 12 exams. I'm pretty sure around 20 or 30, almost more than 30% of them will be multicultural backgrounds. And yet there's no representation of that large chunk of students in executive levels of decision making. Correct. So that's what needs to change. We need more, we need more encouragement from a political perspective of these multicultural and ethnic backgrounds represented in that executive decision decision making level so that they can create policies that are culturally receptive and also policies that will allow for the enhancement of this community specifically. Quite right. Um, let me come to my final question to you, Ayushi. Um, how do you uh, see the cooperation in healthcare sectors between India and Australia? And yeah. what do you think both the countries can learn from each other? Mm. I think there's a lot to learn. From India, they're, they're, first of all, the healthcare sectors are quite interesting because they're quite different um, in many ways, which means that they have a lot to learn. In Australia, the way we approach medicine is very different to the way we approach medicine in India. I think the kind of westernised approach that Australia takes, the focus on patient communication and understanding patients from what I've seen in my medical degree is very, very important. It's it's less um, academically focused and more clinically focused. How do you treat your patients is important on how how likely they are to come back and seek medical treatment. So if you treat your patients horribly, then they're less likely to come back for medical treatment in the future and you might not diagnose them properly. That's what Australia focuses on in the healthcare system. The advantage of the Indian healthcare system is there's a lot of depth and breadth of knowledge about a vast majority of diseases and conditions that we don't exactly see in Australia. And that's because they have a large population, a large influx of people coming in. I would argue that India is more capable of handling a large population in the hospital. Australia, when it came to the pandemic, struggled with having 200 people come in to the COVID, uh, in COVID into the hospitals. They struggled with ICU wards being overflowed with patients, whereas India with a larger population is slightly more equipped to understand how to cater for a larger population. So there's a lot of similarities and differences, but I think it's the differences that allow us to learn from each other. India can learn how to focus more on clinical, clinical medicine, whereas Australia can focus more on larger populations, wider variety of diseases, how to train doctors to handle that um, variety. So there's a lot that doctors can learn from each other, but also hospitals and hospital decision makers um, can learn from each other in this sector. Very well said, Ayushi. I couldn't agree more. And I think that's really the core of why we are doing seri a series like this that, you know, just focuses on this relationship that is between India and Australia, which has become so critical 
on the Indo-Pacific as two large democracies that have so mm. many similarities, uh, yet, you know, there's so much to learn from each other. Uh, thank you so much, Ayushi, for joining us today. And I really hope to have you on again and to really just learn more from you as to, you know, what you're doing and uh, what we can learn from each other. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you very much for having me.